Is it, is, it hard, is it hard to be fresh if you don't have money or can you still pull it off? See, when I had no money, I still had sauce. Mm -hmm. See, if you don't got no sauce, then you, you, you're lost. Mm -hmm. But you can also get lost in the sauce. What's going on, everybody? Welcome back for another episode. Uh, yesterday, I was trying to get to the junkyard in time before they closed, but that just didn't happen. So I'm going to go here a little later this afternoon. Uh, I figured before I did that, I'd make you guys a quick video because uh, I haven't uploaded anything on the single cam in quite a minute. Um, so what we're going to go ahead and do today, if you haven't already seen from the description, uh, we're going to go ahead and wire in VTEC. I'm going to show you guys what you need to do to get the solenoid to work. And then I'm also going to show you guys how to run the presser switch. Now the pressure switch is not necessary to get the car running or to get VTEC to work uh, but it is good to have if you're daily driving the car or if you're doing it for like a customer or if it's like your little brother's car or something like that um, it's always best to have that uh, VTEC pressure switch. That way you know you have enough pressure there when you're going ahead and uh, popping VTEC. Now I have a oil pressure gauge already in my car so that won't be necessary. I'm not going to waste the time to do it, but I'm going to show you guys what you need to do if you guys want to run that. So let's go ahead and jump into this video. All right, first things first, you just need the stuff that you're going to need to be able to do it. Um, you can go to the junkyard and find these plugs on any VTEC harness. Um, you also don't have to use this. If you want, you can actually wire it in straight. Uh, I'll show you. Uh, the only problem is if you end up wiring it straight in, if you try to... Uh, take the engine out or anything like that. Uh, you just gotta take the wiring harness, put everything to the side. Actually, no, you'd still have to cut it. Um, so that'd be the only bad part about wiring it straight in. If you uh, don't have the, the uh, female part of this plug, you can cut that off and then wire it straight into your ECU. Um, but we have the plug. I went to the junkyard a ways back um, and got a harness that I needed for another car and I ended up using it. So I just ended up cutting out the uh, plug off of that one. Uh, so. Just get your plug. Obviously you wanna strip it at the end. Um, you can use uh, solder if you want to hold it together, whatever. A solder is always gonna work the best because you're literally welding it together. Um, and then just pick yourself up some radio wire. Uh, this is 16 gauge. You can use 18 gauge if you want. Um, doesn't really matter because uh, it's not using a bunch of electricity uh, running through it. So I'm gonna go ahead and get started. I'm just gonna go ahead and solder that up. Put some electrical tape around it and then this will just run straight into the dash. Alright, so I just went ahead and got that soldered. Um, now I'm just going to go ahead and wrap it with some electrical tape and we'll go ahead and get started on the car. Sweet, so first I'm going to go ahead and just clip this in then I'm going to run it into the engine bay. Uh, then after I do that, I'm going to show you guys what you got to do if you do want to run the pressure switch. My pressure switch, you can see the plastic around it broke. It's probably when I was putting the engine in and out or taking the head off or something like that. Um, but it's still, if you have the male part, it will still fit onto those prongs. Just be a little loose. But if, uh, if you have this situation where yours is broken, it is easiest just to take this off, go to the junkyard, get another one. Or you can get that at AutoZone. I think they're like 10, 15 bucks. So, but anyways, let me first just go ahead and plug this in and run it. So I went ahead and already took out the battery tray. Um, I'm gonna go through here. So just slide the wire in underneath here and then put it in. So that should be good for that. Sweet, now you guys can see where I ran it straight in through where the normal wiring harness goes. Uh, now I'm gonna show you guys what you need to do to run the pressure switch. Um, get the actual plug. This one you're definitely going to want to get the plug for because um, you got nowhere to cut, nothing else that you can use. Uh, I actually have the plug right here. Let me see. It's somewhere on here. Give me a second. Oh, right here. So you got this plug here. Um, so go to the junkyard, just cut this off, and you're going to have two wires in it. Um, this one grounds with inside itself, um, but we're not going to do that with the new one. Uh, we're going to actually just ground it to the thermostat. That'll be the easiest instead of running both those in there and then finding somewhere to ground it and so forth. It's kind of difficult uh, or just, you know, too much wires for no reason. So uh, give yourself just enough so you can add it right here. I don't know if you guys can see, but there is a ground right here for the thermostat. Um, this is the uh, engine harness ground or one of the engine harnesses ground. So you can go ahead and tap into there. So the red wire, you're going to want to run there and then you're going to want to run another wire straight here down and into the engine bay just like we did 
uh, for the solenoid. So now since we got this finished here in the engine bay, we're gonna move to the ECU portion. All right, now for the fun part. Uh, when you have a car that doesn't have VTEC or didn't previously have VTEC, you'll notice that there is obviously no wire in there. Um, that's the pinout right there that we're gonna be going to. Um, so I'm gonna show you guys how to get this in. Um, if you have one, an old plug laying around, like an old wiring harness, all these are gonna be the same on the inside as long as they're like this style plug, even if it's from an EG, an EF, any of those, they're all gonna look like this um, on the inside. Um, and they have clips on the inside, so you see that little flap on the top of there? Once it goes in, it makes it so the wire won't actually come out. Um, so I'm going to show you guys how to get the wires out um, and get one in as well. Getting in is easy, it's just getting them out. That's a pain in the butt. So, first thing you want to do is on this plug here, uh, you're going to see that you have this little white piece here. This doesn't come out, but it's going to pop up. So if you get a small screwdriver, you'll see there's a little spot right there and there's one spot right over here. And you can lift up on the edge. You can see somebody's already lifted it before. Um, this will just lift up. It won't come all the way out. It'll just lift up. That way it backs out of the way. That way you can get to these plugs. So I'm just gonna go ahead and do that real fast. All right, now that that is popped up, you'll see it doesn't come all the way out. It just pops up that way um it gets out of the way so all you got to do is lift up on the little plastic clip on the inside i'm going to go ahead and set the camera down that way you guys can i can show you a little bit all right so if you see in the plug you'll see there's like a fat side and then like a skinny side um there on the top uh, there's actually a little clip so if you get like uh, something like this or a small screwdriver to like fix your glasses or whatnot uh, you'll be able to pull up on it so all you got to do is reach in there pull up on it and then the wire will just pull right out of the back um, but you got to make sure that you pull up on it as long as you got something small it is super easy to get it in now um, or getting it in is going to always be easier but getting it out can kind of be a pain sometimes so you just want to lift on it and then it should pull right out um, now going in is extremely easy. I'll show you guys here real fast. You literally just put it in, just like that. It just clips right in. And then once you're done, you wanna go ahead and push on this again. All right, now that that's in place, that wire ain't going nowhere no time soon. Also, just as a quick uh, reminder for you guys, um, this is going to be A8. So if you're doing a OBD2 car, it's going to be A8. Uh, easiest way to know it is on the opposite side of it is your injectors, and they're going to be solid colors. Um, so this is green, uh, blue, uh, I'm pretty sure that's red, and then brown. Uh, those are all going to be the same solid colors, so it's going to be on the opposing side. Uh, your VTEC, it's going to be right there at the top. So once you got that in, you can go ahead and just wire it in. Uh, so I'm just going to grab the wire that I have here, and I'm going to go ahead and just quickly wire that straight in. All right, so we got that wired in. Now, if you're to go ahead and hook the ECU in and drive the car as long as it is a VTEC ECU, your VTEC will engage. Um, now for the pressure switch. Um, if you guys do want to add that in, the car will have to warm up, get to uh, the right pressure, and then that switch will go ahead and activate. Uh, and it is this one right here. Um, so this is going to be a C, uh, C15, I'm pretty sure. Yeah, this is C15. Let me just double check in just a second. Yep, C15. So I have a diagram here. Um, you can see it. it's like a mirror when you're looking at the plugs, just so you know. Um, 15 is this one right here. And you can see that there's an indention on that side. So you got an indention over here. It's going to be this one right in the middle. And notice there's no wire in there now because, like I was saying before, this car didn't have VTEC. So same thing I did with this wire. Um, you're going to want to get one of those plugs. and You're going to go ahead and plug it in here. And you're going to run that straight to the engine bay. Um, if you do that, then you got your oil pressure. Um, uh, you got oil pressure, VTEC oil pressure uh, sensor, and then you also have your VTEC solenoid. This is what's most important to pop VTEC. It needs to have signals so that way it can engage uh, the piston to lock VTEC. Um, but yeah, guys, that is pretty much everything you need to uh, wire VTEC in your car. 
Sweet, and that's it. That is all you need to do to get VTEC working in your car. Um, besides, obviously, having a VTEC engine, um, that'll do a lot of work for you. If you don't have a VTEC engine, you won't be popping VTEC. So, if you do all that wiring and you don't have a VTEC engine, don't come to me asking why your VTEC don't work. <laughs> I'm just messing with you guys. But it's super uh, straightforward. I uh, That was like one of the first things wiring I actually learned how to do in general. Um, and that was back in like 2006 uh, when I got my first Honda, put a B16 into it and I had to wire it. And that was like the first thing I ever wired at all in my life. So um, comes from experience, super, super easy. You guys, um, if you have any questions, please write them down in the comments. I'd be more than happy to help you guys. Um, pressure switch, like I said, if you guys want to run that, it is smart. Um, if you guys want to be on the safe side, you don't have an oil pressure, uh, an oil pressure gauge or anything like that, it is always smart to uh, run it. I'm just not going to do it because race car, you know, race car lifestyle. But anyways, guys, go ahead and like and subscribe, and we'll see you guys soon. Peace. You don't got no sauce, then. You're lost. Mm -hmm. But you also get lost in the sauce.